Many years ago, Martin Campbell's movie Green Lantern was supposed to be a starting point for the DC Universe. It was intended to pave the way for Justice League, and even have a brief appearance by Henry Cavill's Superman at the end. But then things began to stall at the production stage, and the filmmakers had to quickly abandon many ideas. They removed all references to other superheroes, and Green Lantern became one of 2011's biggest failures. They first attempted to make the movie back in the late 90s. Following Batman Forever's success, Warner Brothers worked on several superhero movies at once. They even tried to get Quentin Tarantino and Kevin Smith to direct the movie about Green Lantern, but both declined such a flattering offer. After the huge box office failure of Batman and Robin, the studio had to cancel all of its projects in the late 90s. Nicolas Cage and other individuals who wanted to run around in bright costumes were sent home. The studio returned to Green Lantern only after the release of Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. Although the movie wasn't a big box office success, the feedback from critics and audiences showed that Batman and Robin's failure was a thing of the past. The studio considered several candidates to direct Green Lantern. Evan David Goyer, whose Blade Trinity just bombed at the box office, showed interest in the project. The studio offered Goyer the opportunity to direct the movie, but he declined because Warner Brothers was also working on The Flash at the time, and Goyer preferred that project. Thus, Martin Campbell was chosen as the movie's director. Campbell was never a famous director, so his name was unfamiliar to many, but he had numerous box office hits. He directed two James Bond films, Golden Eye and Casino Royale, and also worked on The Mask of Zorro and Vertical Limit. And although his career had some poorly rated movies like No Escape and The Legend of Zorro, Campbell could still be considered a solid filmmaker. Shortly after signing the contract, Campbell pushed for Bradley Cooper to play the main character. The director firmly believed that Bradley was the only actor who could be the perfect Green Lantern. Today, the studio's refusal to cast Cooper may seem strange, but in 2009, when pre-production on Green Lantern was just getting started, Bradley Cooper was basically a no-name. Warner Brothers hasn't yet released The Hangover, a comedy that no one at the studio believed in. Besides that, Cooper only had a couple of supporting roles in movies like Yes Man and Wedding Crashers. Additionally, he was part of the creepy All About Steve with Sandra Bullock, whose release was delayed multiple times, reportedly due to its incredible quality. That is, Ryan Reynolds did not seem like a weird choice. Additionally, he had already appeared in a Wolverine movie, which meant that the studio could expect some additional benefits from Green Lantern if the X-Men movie was a hit. All this caused a problem that would make Ryan Reynolds hate Green Lantern later. Some people may think that Ryan hates on the movie because it failed, but that is not true. Well, not entirely true. Reynolds went through difficult times after the filming began in early 2010, all because of director Martin Campbell, who could not accept Reynolds starring in his movie. An offended Ryan claimed that the director made him do dozens of takes for easy scenes and over 50 takes for difficult ones. Each take came with Campbell's caustic comments. The director called Reynolds a mediocre actor whose inability to act harmed the entire film crew. There are even rumors that the director and actor fought several times. But this didn't change anything, and Ryan Reynolds had to go back to listening to insults and completing 50 more takes. Later, Reynolds mentioned that Martin Campbell would have been in serious trouble if it hadn't been for Reynolds' future wife, Blake Lively, whom he met on the Green Lantern set. The never-ending conflict between the lead actor and the director naturally had an impact on the movie. Due to the tense situation on set and constant delays, the filming schedule was disrupted, increasing the already large budget to $200 million. Filming for Green Lantern took more than five months instead of the planned four. After conducting test screenings, the studio simply destroyed the movie by editing out almost 40 minutes. Martin Campbell was furious. He claimed that the studio killed the movie, turning it into some stupid compilation of incoherent video clips. Ryan Reynolds didn't comment on the studio's actions, but he didn't hide his delight at the movie's failure during his interviews. He said that he wouldn't want to go through that hell on set again, and it was probably higher powers that saved him from the sequel. However, there is one point to mention. Reynolds seems to be the main victim in the conflict, but it's not uncommon for Ryan to clash with other filmmakers. He angered Wesley Snipes during the filming of Blade Trinity, and he also pushed out Tim Miller, the director of Deadpool, from directing Deadpool 2. So maybe it's not just that Martin Campbell wanted Bradley Cooper in the movie. 
Despite having a $200 million budget, the movie only made $116 million at the American box office. The global box office brought another $103 million. Multiple sources reported that the studio lost over $150 million on the movie. The studio quickly cancelled the sequel and forgot about the Green Lantern Corps for many years. Unfortunately, we'll never know what would have happened to all the Reynolds and Campbell interviews if Green Lantern had become a big box office hit. By the way, the action film's failure had a significant impact on Campbell's career. The director was out of the spotlight for six years. In 2017, he returned with the movie The Foreigner, which did fairly well at the box office considering its low budget.